welcome to We Never Met, the podcast where I have interesting strangers on every single week and fresh off a mural. You know that because <laughs> you're still covered in paint. Yeah. Um, can you, you introduce yourself real quick? Okay. Uh, I'm Liz Flores and I'm um, a painter and muralist here in Chicago. Is that what Chicago. you lead with usually? Painter and muralist if yeah. you're introducing? Yeah, usually, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is a muralist second for a reason? Is it because you paint just... Um, painter is general and murals is yeah, more Yeah, because painter is like my canvas work and stuff. Okay. And then work like works on paper. And then murals are obviously murals, so that's different. Yeah. Um, so, you know, sometimes people are, they paint, but they don't do murals, you know? Sure, sure, sure. Um, and you seem very mural. Mural is such a hard word for me to say. Mural. Mural heavy right now. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah, I definitely feel like I am mural heavy right now, but my like, like studio practice, meaning mm-hmm. my paintings are like sure. just as important, which I think is why I always lead with like, I'm a painter. Yeah. Keep it general yeah. rather than specific. <laughs> and uh, yeah, because I, yeah, it's like not just murals that right. like is my art practice. So Yeah. You, you sell like regular paintings and stuff like yeah. that too. Yeah. I saw an Instagram that you just sold one I recently. Did. Yeah. It's going to a restaurant, which is oh, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. In Phoenix. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Do you ever like go to these places that have your paintings at them and be like, just sort of sit there? Yeah, I want. <laughs> no, I haven't. I want yeah, yeah. to. I actually thought somebody asked me that too. Like, yeah. like are you going to go to Phoenix? I'm like, I would love to. Just sit in the restaurant. Just go. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, look at this. Yeah. Isn't this cool? <laughs> that. I, just I, FYI. Did, I did it. Yeah. Okay. Don't even order anything. Yeah. Just like sit there. You can, you can go now. Yeah. That's all. I just wanted to tell you that. Yeah. That's really cool though. Especially around Chicago because... How many murals have you done around Chicago? Um, so this is my so this is my first year painting murals. Really? Yeah. So you, so you had a hot mural year then. I had a very yes, I had a very wow. good year. I yeah. Because how many is it this year that you've done? Um, I think I've done like mm, the ones I saw were at Hawthorne Mall, Lululemon. Yeah, Sephora. You did one in Brooklyn. I did one in Brooklyn. I'm doing one now. Yeah. Um, and then. Like I'm forgetting something, but it's um, a lot though in one yeah, year. Yeah, no, it is, especially to be like so new to it. Like I kind of right. just went like right out out of like out of the gate, just Sprinting. like going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then one project just like led to the, like the other, and yeah, I never said no to anything. So, um, is that sort of a common practice for you in general? You just never say no to anything. Is that a theme in your life? You um, just kinda... in the beginning, yeah. When yeah, I'm like yeah. first starting off with something like yeah. I just want to get as much experience doing it Which obviously yeah and then like once you start like kind of learning like the business of it then mm-hmm. you're like okay this makes sense this doesn't make sense sure um so like so now I do say no to some projects that just right. don't make sense um but I was gonna say does that get you into trouble ever where you just say yes to so much stuff and you don't actually have time to do it um yeah that happens yeah <laughs> What do you do? Um, just feel like you don't sleep and you just work. That's a bummer. I know. <laughs> then you're like, why did I say yeah? That's to way all too this many. Stuff. Yeah. Oh, uh, Berwyn too. I can't forget that. I did a mural in Berwyn. It's where I um, grew up too. So. Berwyn. Where's Berwyn? Uh, it's a sub like suburb right outside Chicago near okay. Cicero and Oak Park. Okay. Um, Where'd you do it there? Uh, so that one was kind of interesting because it's a free st- like there are these freestanding murals. Okay. So they ha- they like gave a bunch of different artists these like um I think they're like eight feet or something um these like wood panels to paint on okay. and then we gave them the wood panels when we were done and then they were like put them up and it's um all along the like metro train route. Oh, cool. Yeah, in like the Berwyn area. So nice. I know. I still have to like go home and like see it. You I haven't seen it. No, I. I know. And I always take the Metro home and I just haven't like gone home. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I know. It's like the easiest one to do. Cause yeah. you just ride, literally ride the train and go. go well, see and, the me- and it's like a 15 minute Metro ride from Union Station. Yeah. To you Berwyn. gotta get the picture at least for like Instagram. You know? I know, Otherwise I know. it didn't happen. I know. I know. I posted like all of these like in progress shots and then like I finished it <laughs> and, then and then, and then I had to like run to the next project. And oh, so man. I didn't even post like a finished. Yeah. That's like the least satisfying thing ever. Bill I know. All the way I was like, end. sweet. I'm done. I don't have time. Right, I got to go. Yeah. Fine, yeah. To the next I was like, one. I'll post it later. So, um, yeah. So I, that one too. So I have to take a picture of that, but yeah. Cause it's very interesting when I was like looking up your story and stuff, you, there was no really intent to be an artist doing that full time coming out of like school yeah no yeah and uh, is it because 
your parents and stuff and still sort of like a real nine to five clock in clock out kind of job is that the reason or was uh, it internal I think it's like maybe like a mixture of a lot of things yeah because i feel like just my me myself i mm-hmm. was like i i mean i just never pictured anybody being like doing being an artist well you that know? also wasn't something at least because how old are you i'm 29 okay i'm 28 so the, like growing up um, in school, it was never something that was like told, like you can be an artist as a, no. as a job. And you don't see that. Like you no. don't meet like artists that are alive and yeah. like doing good right. work. You know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So like social media has now made that a lot easier, but like, oh, sure. Back, like when we're in, when we were in school, yeah, we did yeah. not have that. So it's yeah. like that you had to like really be intentional about seeking that out, which right. like I, I wasn't, I was really into art and I wanted to study art, but like. Yeah, my, I mean, my parents were just like, that doesn't make any sense at right. all. Yeah. Um, and so, which I also was like, yeah, you're right. That doesn't make any sense. Right. You know, They're all like, dead. All the professionals yeah, have I'm died. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to have to be dead to make yep. any money. So, like, that just didn't make sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I just, I mean, I studied, I studied entrepreneurship and, yeah. like, business and stuff. So, but, like, I did really not have any intention of, like, really starting a business like I just kind of liked that field um and then I had like a job offer right out of college Mm. with like just a regular nine to five job and I was like great and then I was like oh this sucks (laughs) this is actually terrible (laughs) was it it didn't suck because what reasons do you think why did you hate that specifically um well I so I loved the people that I worked with it wasn't like anything like that it just was like the just the overall idea of like Mm. I go to a place and I do this work that doesn't really feel important right. to me. It was like monotonous. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And it really wasn't like, wasn't, um, I don't know, just like, I just felt like all my strong suits, like my, the things that I'm like good at, like all this We're like not creativity being taken advantage of. N- and none yeah, yeah, at yeah. all. If anything, it was like the worst things I was <laughs> like, like the worst, like yeah. math and numbers. And I oh, was like, yeah. This is not like I'm not going to survive here. Yeah. Like this is not good. How long did you make it at the job before you? I was there for three years. Well, that's a good chunk of time. Yeah, yeah. And, but I was doing a bunch of art stuff all while I was doing that. Okay. And so I kind of was like, okay, the nine to five is like pushing the art forward, you know? Yeah, yeah, sure. Because I was able to get like a studio space in the city, mm-hmm. um, like to work on my art, and so I would right. do that after work. Um, I went to like New York a bunch um, and did traveling and stuff. And yeah. like I would have never been able to do that without the nine to five yeah. financing all that. But that's also just like a lot of time outside of actual work doing other stuff. So it's like, yeah, you don't have time to do anything else pretty no. much. No, I barely have time to do that. Really? Yeah. No, I know. I remember being like, man, like I haven't like, like everyone goes to happy hour and stuff. I was like, <laughs> I've been to I like skip it. a happy hour like forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I never like see like, yeah, I would never see really see my coworkers outside of work. Like, because you're like, I have to go home. I have to, because I was living with my parents still yeah. when I was at this nine to five. So like go back to Berwyn, mm-hmm. you know, get my car and then drive back to the city to yeah. my art studio yeah, to work on my art at night. Yeah. And so I was like, I do not have time. I'm like, I barely have time to go to my like yoga class yeah, that I want to yeah. go to. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. It's just like priorities, but um, yeah. Do you think time though that has like changed at all? Because based on what you're telling me before we're recording, you don't really have any time now either. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's well, it's more like just time ebb and flow. Just doing stuff that you like, though. Yeah, more often. Exactly, it's yeah. different. Like when I was in my nine to five, I remember like being. Like those chunks of hours, like those, you know, eight hours that you're working. It felt like a waste of time. I just remember being like, oh my God, I could get so much done in this time. Like I could be doing so much so that I can have a life later, you know, and that I can go do things. And like, and that I think aggravation, like just kind of built up. And like, eventually I was like, I just have to like leave. Yeah. What was the turning point? What was like after three years, how did you pick a specific day that you're like, this I'm done. (laughs) Now I'm done. Um, I was like, if I don't quit, like I'm someone's going to be like, what does she do? And I'm going to get fired. Really? Yeah. I was like, I, like, I, like I said, I really liked, uh, I liked the people that I worked with and everything. And sure. like, and I felt, you know, it's like, it sucks when you see people that are actually passionate and you're not, and mm. they're doing really good. You know what I'm saying? I yeah, felt yeah, like yeah. I just wasn't, I don't know. I just was like, I don't want to leave on a bad note. Right, right, right. And I've been working, I had already been like working on my art for a while. 
I was like, I'm young. I don't have, like, I was still living with my parents at the time. Like, all of these things, I was like, I really don't have too much to risk right now. Like, right. let's just do it. I don't, yeah. you know, I and I was also just like, it's been, it was like three years of just being really frustrated and sure. seeing everybody else like going out and doing these things mm. and opportunities. And there were so many times when I wanted to go out and do something, but it was like, oh, but we need it during this time. And I'm like, I, I'm working. Yeah. You know? And I was like, you know what? I know. It's time to like just leave. So wow. I just got kind of, yeah, ultimately fed up. And I was like, let's just do that. And I was like, if it doesn't work out, you'll see me here in six months. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you did that and like went home to your parents, did you give your two weeks notice or were you, or you, or were you like, I'm done? I'm done now forever. Like, no, I gave it? my two weeks okay. notice. Yeah. yeah. Um, And then I told my parents after I gave my two weeks notice. Yeah. Were yeah. they like, what are you doing? Oh my god, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. My was dad it, were you scared to tell tell him in the first place? Terrified. I bet, yeah. Terrif I was like, I'm gonna need to move out immediately. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm terrified. Can't live here anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, my dad was in his office and then I was like, Hey dad, like I talked to you about something and he was like and it's like the office where it's like this is the office where every time I had a bad grade, I had to like come in here yeah. and be like, hey, dad. I Can you come out of the office and yeah. talk to me out here yeah. to the kitchen? Like, it just was like, oh, man. I was like, I have had a lot of bad memories, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, like yeah. where you're getting yelled at. And so, uh, and then um, I was like, well, I'm like quitting the Orange Group. I already put my two weeks notice in. And yeah. he was like, my mom's name is Lisette. And he, he was like, Lisette, get in here. <laughs> and he was like, Listen to what your daughter has to say. I was like, <laughs> I was tell her now yeah, too. Yeah, I was like, I'm gonna be an artist. Yeah, that's what I said. And they were like, Okay, like, <laughs> what's your plan? Blah blah blah. Yeah. And like, I don't know. To be honest, I really did not have a good, strong plan. I yeah. just was like, I just am gonna try. Well, at least you were doing it beforehand. It wasn't like right. I'm gonna quit now and then gonna start. And trying. then gonna try <laughs> yeah. like researching and whatever. Right, yeah, right. like I had already been talking to a lot of artists and stuff, and like figuring out how people make a living yeah. um, and sort of, you know, uh, put their lives together. And so I, I guess I kind of had an idea, but like you don't have a solid, like there's no solid structure. Sure. So, so that was really hard. It was really hard for my parents to like be like a hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. They are now, now that I've had like so many times of like, look, yeah. yay, I'm making money. Look I'm it, making I'm money. Doing this. I'm yeah. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, it was definitely hard for them. And like we, uh, my dad's Mexican and my mom's Cuban. And so mm -hmm. like, they are just like, um, we really were hoping for like a solid, something, yeah. something solid, right. you know, like, and so, um, something yeah. we can tell people and they can be like, oh yeah, that's good. Yes, you know exactly. I mean? And I think that, that yeah. was so hard for them yeah. for a while, like for the three years that I had my corporate job, like. They would like, yeah, talk to their friends right. and be like, oh, our daughter, Elizabeth, like, they, they call me Elizabeth, too. Wow, that's they don't very call formal. me Liz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who calls you Liz, then? Um, I mean, everybody calls me Liz. Okay. Only my parents and, like, certain family members, they call me Elizabeth. Wow. I know. Uh, it's so horrible. I know. <laughs> and then, and my mom will be like, your father says. Really? Yes. You live in, like, a fairy tale? <laughs> I, it's like, I'm like, okay, yeah, dad said that, got it. Yeah. Um, and, your yeah, father. but they were like, yeah, you know, our daughter works here and she does this. And be like, oh, okay. And then I noticed that, yeah, when I quit my job that- They didn't want they, to talk about it anymore? No. Yeah. They were like, yeah, we have a daughter over there. Because it's almost like you have <laughs> to reach this level of success where like th even they know before they tell them that you're you're good. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Which is like insane. Yes. It's like you have to be like Van Gogh level. <laughs> exactly. So uh, they already know who you are. Your cousins already know you're really successful. Yes. And your parents can just reinforce that. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, it's just not having like a clear definition. I realize like- right. People get very uncomfortable when they just can't grasp what you do immediately. Yeah. And like if you're just like, well, I'm an artist. They're people like, are oh, like, so is everyone. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> okay, but what do you really do? Yeah. You know, like they just job, don't. Yeah. yeah. And, or they're like, what do you mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. what do you mean by that? There's no way that you're like just painting. You know, like there's just no way. <laughs> Bullshit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Show me the proof. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. So I think that that. Um, and that was like kind of hard in the beginning for sure. Yeah, that is hard because I mean that that's just a classic parent thing. I've heard that from so many people, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it's like um, my younger sister is an actress. Like that's what she does. She like works another job part time, but like her, the main thing she wants to do is like 
you know, so she does like plays and musicals and all that stuff. But, uh, it's hard to like explain that to someone without it sounding like you aren't doing anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is nuts because you're probably working more than anybody else. Yeah, probably. And you're like, trying to do something that you really love. So like, yeah, like I that, don't get that it. Doesn't that count for more? No, no. No. Yeah. I, I don't get it at all. I know. I mean, people are like, well, like you just get to like stay home and paint and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Some days. Yeah. Yeah. But like, no, there's just so much that goes into it. You're literally yeah. running. I mean, if that's what you're like your art and stuff, if that's what you want to like live off of, mm-hmm. then you're like running a business. Sure. So yeah, there's a million things that go into it. Yeah. I mean, I work in like photography and, and video and stuff. And if I tell someone that I do that for some reason, there's like a different level of like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. You know, like it makes more concrete sense to them for some reason. Yeah. Rather than saying like, if I was, if I was like to approach and be like, I'm an artist. Cause I mean, I guess I could say that, you know? Yeah, you could. Yeah. But if I said that there would probably be a different reaction, which is totally. weird. You know, I don't know yeah. why that is like, because you have technology or use technology for it, like upgrades your status. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Because when you're it's making bizarre. things with your hands, they're like, uh, primitive. Yeah. Not real. Nope. Nope. <laughs> if nope. it's not factory made, it's not for me. Get it out of here. <laughs> Get it from Target or I don't want to see it. Exactly. Yeah, at all. Only Ikea. Yeah. It's the <laughs> yeah, best. Yeah, for us. Yeah. Um, but no, that is interesting because you gave a, like an entire TED talk basically about this, about yeah. your process of like um, quitting your job and like pursuing what you wanted to do. Um, which is really cool, but like there was like a like a lot. There's been a lot of TED talks, yeah, you know. But I feel like not a lot of people have done them. Y- yeah, yeah. I can't point to another person that I've ever met in my life that has done one other than you. Now, oh, cool. Um, but it's such a cool <laughs> experience. I'm sure. Like, how did you get that? You did it at your college alma mater. Yeah, Illinois uh, State. Yeah, yeah, which is close to where I went to school too. Yep. Um, so how was that? Yeah, what was that experience like? Oh my God, that was so crazy. Um, Cause I think that that was like, I think I had just quit my job, I believe. Um, and so, so like there was like, just like a, like a lot of things sure. going on. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but it came about because like in those three years that I was like doing art and like mm-hmm. stuff like that, um, I had a blog and I was like blogging a lot mm. about the whole kind of experience. What year was this? Like what years would be? Years um, this would be like 2012. 12, 2013, 2014. Okay. All right. Um, and so, yeah, so I had a blog. I was like writing a lot. I was getting on Instagram, but I wasn't like on it sure. um, like how I am now. And um, and my professor, my entrepreneurship professor, um, like was, I guess, reading my blog and like, you know, and like following along. And he would be like, like, yeah, like this is so great that you want to mm-hmm. like do art and pursue like, you know, more kind of entrepreneurial career and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And so he was just kind of following along with like that journey. And then he was like the contact for um, the TED conference and like the TEDx thing. And so um, what's he, the difference between like a TEDx and a TED talk? Is there any difference? So yes, there's oh, a difference. There is, okay. So TEDx is like, independently um like curated like ted talks so any like any like they have tedx talks like in chicago and like um i mean i get like schools and stuff like that so it's somebody that wants to bring that whole like kind of idea of ted like Mm -hmm. having speakers and stuff yeah to like another place um and then TED is like in one like the place. whole like the whole TED so it's like the TED is like the umbrella and then the TEDx is like all these individual mm, conferences that mean. happen like yeah. around the country yeah and so like yeah so the TED one is like the big one that's like yeah. the you know people who are like insanely crazy speakers yeah, and yeah. on the speaker circuit you know yeah. and just yeah Brene Brown Brene you know? Brown I was just <laughs> thinking Brene Brown <laughs> it's the only one I know Brene Brown like I yeah. don't know maybe Elizabeth Gilbert's in there but um yeah. Yeah, uh, so so he contacted me because he's like, we are doing a TEDx mm. um, and we're putting together like, and you had to apply to be a speaker and okay. like kind of pitch an idea and sure. stuff like that. Um, but he was like, I just think that you're like, you have a great story. Mm-hmm. Like you don't worry about pitching anything. Like just, would well, you want to do it? Yeah, wow. I was like, oh, I was in a boardroom at the time too. I was, <laughs> I know, I was wow. in a meeting. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> like messaging. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. And I was like, yes. Trying to like pretend you're paying yeah, attention. Yeah, I was like, mm-hmm. 
And I was like, Definitely. oh my God. I was like, okay, Ted, yeah, Ted Dog, yes. yes. So I sent that. And then that was like, um, he was like, you know, it's going to be, I had like almost a year mm-hmm. to like kind of preparing. Oh, and stuff. wow. So, um, yeah. So I was like, okay, like, cool. You know, you, you say yes. And then yeah. you're like, I said yes, I'm going to do this. And, you know, yeah. and, then and then you it, just started getting nervous. Yeah. Yeah. When it actually started to come up. Um, I was so terrified. Uh, I, it, it's like, how long is it? Like 15 minutes? So it depends. Some of them are like 15. I think ours were a lot shorter. It was like eight minutes or something, which that sometimes is even worse because right. you have so much to say, but yeah, such a little, and they are really strict with like time. Mm. Um, and so you have like a big, they just time. cut you to black in mid sentence. Yeah. Right. You have like a big time thing in the front and you have people like, like trying like to give you okay. cues, like yeah. on where you're at and stuff. Mm. And then, I don't even know. Um, and so it's funny yeah. going from that. And then I did a creative mornings talk that was like, I think like 40 minutes maybe or so, 45 minutes. Wow. That's so a long go, time. like the, t- I know. I was like, okay, this is crazy. Like the, yeah. time, the difference. Um, but so, yeah. So for that one, I, um, I mean, I, the way I like, whenever I'm doing any kind of speaking thing, mm-hmm. I do post it notes and that's how I like flow oh. my talk out. Okay. Like I just I I have ideas of like what I want to say, and I'm like you know this this, and I just write them on post-it notes in like a flow. Okay. And I'm like okay, and then I like take my computer and like look at that and then type sure. it out my okay. like dialogue out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then my for my slides, I drew my slides and they were like these little cartoon characters. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so yeah, it ended up being awesome. I, yeah. Yeah, it was a blast, but I. Felt like I was gonna be sick before I went up there. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I felt like I was gonna. Throw You're getting filmed too, and you only got one. Do you only get one shot? One at shot. It. That's it. That's terrible. I know. And then like and it's like spotlight, and like you you know stand on the big dot, yeah. you know, like and like, uh, oh my god. And then they had like uh, little earpieces and stuff. Mm. And take they, her away. It's been eight minutes. <laughs> yeah. Get her off the stage. <laughs> get on. Get off. And um, they couldn't fit it in my ear because they're like your ears are too small classic i know classic I was small like, ears <laughs> is that a comment you ever had right? your ears are too small i was small. like what do you mean and so they uh yeah they had to like tape it up like all here wow. and i just put my hair down and like that oh yeah. sure 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 yeah yeah right. i have the exact opposite problem with like headphones where it's like they always <laughs> fall out of my ears because i think my ears are too big oh really yeah you can't tell i got headphones on but <laughs> no. if you could wow <laughs> Um, so yeah, after that, did you see any sort of response like from the public? Uh, how many views does it have? Have, have you checked? Like, uh, I actually haven't checked. No. Was no. there a lot before? Um, you never have checked. I think I maybe checked like once. Mm. I don't know. Whenever I do something, I feel like I leave it and yeah. I don't sure. really go back. Don't go back. Yeah. yeah like your Berwin mural. Yeah. Right. Like I'm like, I'm done. I'm gone. I'm done. I gotta get, gotta get um, out of here. I don't know. I think had a fair amount of views i had a lot of people email me after that that was like pure like the height of ted you know yeah i feel like it's come down a little bit a little bit now now there's a lot of talks and right right right. and so you hit him at the right time though yeah i think so and well i think like there's also a lot of talks that are about like like quitting your job and like i also think Mm. like that i don't know just the story like was at a good time Mm. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I had a lot of people like reach out to me about it. Like, I mean, that they loved it or that they were in a similar situation. Or that, <laughs> Did like, you say like they hated it? No. <laughs> like they loved it or they hated it. They no, just emailed uh, it no, I haven't gotten anyone say that they hated it, but That's good. I guess, I don't know, maybe they wouldn't tell me, but, um, and, um, and like, and, and then I had like other people speaking engagements like come from that like creative yeah. mornings um so it's kind of weird it's like that talk kind of keeps giving back and like but it's like it'll be like two years from now somebody will also come across it and be like yeah. you should come speak you know yeah yeah and so so it kind of just keeps giving back it's like it's, an audition tape you know yeah, now, it's, now it's they know just, you can exactly so. no exactly yeah, that's yeah. actually exactly kind of what it is yeah. so um yeah so that uh has kind of been interesting to see like like years later, people like will contact right. me and still be like, "Hey, we like came across this talk. You should give a talk." And I'm like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because there's two different things, and this is true with like most fields. It's like there's people that can do it, and there's people that can also articulate about it. But mm-hmm. like, just because you can do it doesn't mean you can like articulate it to people. You yeah. Know? Totally. It's a different skill set completely to do. Yeah. So I also think like 
doing um, speaking things, like even this podcast, Mm -hmm. it's really good practice, especially for artists, to talk about yourself and to Mm. talk about what you've done and why you do what you do and your story. Um, Because most of the time artwork is, you know, it's very like you're by yourself. Sure. It's a very solitary thing. And so you can feel like really uncomfortable when you have to actually go and talk about what you're As doing. As you're standing in front of it. Yeah. This is, uh, oh. don't look at me. Yeah, you're like, oh, oh shoot. Wait, what's my name? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, uh, Liz. Okay, it says Liz on yeah. here. That's me. Okay. You're right. Yeah. That's me. Read the plaque. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Make your own mind up. Yeah. I'm going to go. No, that is true though. And I, I think, you know, it's a hard skill to learn. It's hard to talk about yourself, especially yes. in... Uh, our world today you know we're kind of forced to not you know it's not a good thing to talk about yourself or like at least being from the midwest that's how i grew up you know be humble yeah don't talk about yourself a lot yeah so you don't have that skill when you grow up and you're like oh i don't don't yeah you're like i mean i I did that thing it's It's not it's not that big of a deal don't you have to look at it yeah (laughs) i'm not even gonna post about it yeah it's whatever don't don't worry about it yeah so but you are like you're self-taught Mm-hmm. Um, which is a weird thing to have to like be saying about art because I feel like it doesn't really matter if you are or not, you know, yeah. it's like kind of the whole point. It's just like, yeah, you should express yourself. And if you went to school for it, great. But if you didn't, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. You know, totally. is it, is it something that you felt like you had to say because, or you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like you had to proclaim it. I think like, I don't know. That's kind of interesting. I think sometimes like people think it's interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so it starts like a conversation. I think that's why like I'll put it in like a bio or I'll put it yeah, yeah. or I'll, you know, whatever. You know, or if it just comes up, like people will ask if it comes up, like people ask like, oh, where did you go to school or did you study art? Mm. You know, that's kind of just I feel like uh, I get out that question like a lot. And then it hmm. just comes up that like, no, I didn't. And like, it, you know, I'm just self-taught. Yeah. Um. But it does start like a conversation with people because yeah. they're just like, "What? You know, like I don't get it. What do you mean?" <laughs> and it's like, uh, <laughs> "What don't they get?" Like I, I think they're just like, "But you didn't go to school for it, so how can you do it?" <laughs> and I'm yeah. just like, "I don't get that." I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't get that line of of questioning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I get. Yeah, I've gotten that a lot. Um, yeah, or like. If I say like, oh, I studied, um, you know, entrepreneurship business, they're like, but what does that have to do with being an artist? And I'm like, mm, I don't know. No, uh, like it has a lot to do with it. And also it doesn't have to have anything. You could go to school same, for yeah. like economics and be an artist if you wanted to. Totally. Doesn't matter. Yeah, no, that's totally true. There's but no like, correlation. There doesn't have to be. Yeah. I think if like, but if you're like looking to like really live off of your art, oh, and sure, your, you yeah. know, then you're now entering like the business world, right? right. And so, I mean, basically I, anything you create is like an entrepreneurial thing. Yeah, if you're going to sell Which, it and try to market it. Yeah, yeah. And I think I don't think most artists think of themselves as like entrepreneurs, though. And yeah, that's probably where like the business side kind of falls flat. Mm-hmm. Um, and probably why people have like a hard time with their careers. Yeah, I think it's a lot. It's a difference between a lot of people who can make it into a job and who can't. Yeah. You know, because there's a lot of really talented probably artists out there that can't ne- will never be able to do it full time because they can't figure out how to like monetize and how to like totally yeah. make it a, a make thing. it a job. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. Uh, and some people like just don't want to. And like that's totally yeah. fine, too. It's got to be scary. Like the first like couple yeah. weeks when you quit your job and started doing it. <laughs> do you remember like how you felt? Uh, I was like, I need to get like just freelance gigs. I was like, I need to do as many freelance g- gigs as possible. I need to like, cause like, I was like, I'm not going to make it right now off of painting sales. Like I was not at yeah. that point. You How know? did you get leads? Like, um, um stuff to do? so, so I like, I did a lot of, I'm, I think I'm pretty good at like networking. And so I was doing mm-hmm. a lot of networking and like talking to people and telling people I'm going to quit my job and I need hire me like, yeah, like I'm looking to do this kind of work or something. And so um, I and then I also while I was at my corporate job and doing my art, I also was freelancing like a few hours, like a week or something um, Uh for a travel company. Okay, that was because I really love to travel. Mm -hmm. And so they would like send me on trips and stuff like that. Um, And uh, and I would do. like social media and like community management kind of stuff. Okay. They were like a startup. So 
like I was just kind of doing that on the side for like some extra money. Mm -hmm. And then when I quit my, so when I quit my job, like I had that kind of like freelance gig lined up. But there was, through that company, I met like a ton of other entrepreneurs who were Mm. also looking to hire freelancers and things like that. And so I just started, it's like you start to just kind of stitch stuff together (laughs) to like make hope. Yeah, to like make something, you know, and you're like, okay, I think this is going to hold for a while, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And there's like a whole another added pressure too of like you telling that to your parents, living at home. Yeah. And then being like, oh, I got to do something. Like I got to make it look like I'm doing something. Right. Um, Well, and then like, yeah, because they go up, go to work and I would like get up and be like, Bye. What and they're like, we in store today? Yeah, Captain like, Crunch. Right. Yes, exactly. And they're like, okay, God, oh my God, she's just staying here, like at the house. Oh my God. And yeah, because you like work from home then. But that yeah. was like what I wanted so that I could like do art stuff, do art shows and everything. Yeah. Um, so that I could control my time a little bit more. But sure. um, yeah, it was very, very hard. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. bet. But now you're like, not how long ago was that? That you quit. So, um, so I uh, had one. I've had one freelance gig that like consistently, um, and I just officially left that in September, and I haven't taken any more freelance projects of this year. Yeah. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So I kept that one. I had a lot of different like freelance things, and like nothing ever worked, or like it just wasn't a good fit. Yeah. And then a friend of mine, um. Uh, has a consulting company in New York and like it just like worked out perfectly like working with her doing my art like those two things just worked really well Mm -hmm. until like this year when things just really like ramped up and then I was like okay like I think I'm actually like just no more freelance anything no more any project other projects except for like making art yeah um and so but like again like it's hard because that was always like, okay, if something doesn't sell or if I don't get a mural, like you always have this at least yeah. other freelance yeah, kind of project of yeah. or something, you know, that you're working on. But um, yeah, so I always thought that I would always keep something, mm-hmm. like have something on the side or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was just like this year was like I have to devote 100% to it now. Wow. Um, and How do you feel after doing that? So freaked out. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's definitely it definitely was like the best thing to do because I look at like today, right? Like mm-hmm. today, you know, you're working typical kind of maybe like nine to five hours mm-hmm. or like maybe nine to seven. But like it's like if I had any other projects, freelance projects, like there's just no way. Like I yeah. can't devote any other time to anything. Right, so, right. Um, yeah. So uh, I feel really good about the decision. But it was like it's kind of one of those like – easy, hard decisions, mm-hmm. you know, like, right. you know, it's the right thing, but at the same but it's time, like it's really a, hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you're just like churning your life over all like again. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's start anew. Yeah. Again. Yeah, yeah. 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 When did you quit your full-time job? What year? Four was years ago. Four years ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What, uh, what month do you remember? So it was uh, 2015. So, uh, yeah. So this may will be five years. Of- wow. Being out of my corporate job. So that's not a tremendous amount of time, but it is a good chunk of time. Yeah. Like do you, have you, what have you like ran into like over those five years that have been troublesome? Like, did you get to move out of your parents' house and stuff? Yeah. I moved out of my parents' house. Score. Um, what? Score. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I had like, I kept my art studio um, in the West Loop for a while. Um, and that eventually like, I moved to Uptown okay. two years ago, and then um, now um, I live with my boyfriend, and we live in Lakeview. And um, but like something that I quickly realized was like just like commuting to like a studio. Mm-hmm. Like even when I was living at my parents' house, like it just was getting. I was like, commuting I really anywhere hate commuting. is a nightmare. Yeah, commuting. It just don't sucks. even move. Like no, I don't. Like, I don't want to ever get like leave because then yeah. you have to like stand somewhere and wait. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm Forever. like, by the time I get there, I'm like upset because I've been in traffic. Like, <laughs> uh, you know? I'm just in a bad mood too. Yeah. It's like I'm going to drive for an hour to go 10 miles. I'm just going to be in a bad mood. Exactly. Like, and so that was like, okay, I think I want to move into that, you know? Yeah. And so when I moved into my place in Uptown, um, well, I, so I, 
you know, stopped my lease in mm-hmm. the West Loop, and then I started working um, for my apartment in Uptown. And it's just like like complete game changer. I mean, just like loved it. Yeah. Um, because I could like still do my freelance stuff, right? And then mm-hmm. hop straight into a painting, like yeah. right there. Um, and is that then, tough though? Because I feel like if I worked in the same place I lived, it's like, well, when do you stop working and when do you start living? <laughs> you know what I that mean? That was the hard part. You know, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, because I would just and oh, I I also like don't own a TV, so like, oh okay, I also was like, what? I mean, I have Netflix and stuff. So I was like, well, I could watch Netflix or like I do a painting or I could work. Yeah. I mean, you you were, yeah, you are always working basically. Yeah. Um, boundaries, boundaries. Yeah, I had to set some like limitations. Yeah, yeah. And um, like I would go like purposely like get myself outside to like go for walks mm. or like go to the sure. coffee shop down the street. Yeah. I would be like, okay, I'll do freelance computer stuff at the coffee shop, right? And then when I leave the coffee shop, like my brain is – shutting that part of it I off wish I had that and ability. then yeah and then transitioning into like art when I you know whenever I decide to like go home or something what's so what sort of mindset is different about art rather than doing that stuff like mm. so when you're doing art and like you're painting or whatever what sort of headspace are you in compared to like I don't know doing like those freelance jobs where freelance you're projects and like just yeah. yeah um I don't know I think it's like uh, are you thinking about anything like when you're your art is very like shape based and yeah. color based. So like, are you thinking about stuff or are you just sort of like, just doing it? I don't want to say like, cause it, it makes it sound like you're not doing anything. Yeah. That's not what my intent is. <laughs> I'm just saying like when you're doing it is a sort of like freeing for your mind where you're like, you don't have to think about us as much. Cause you're just like sort of inspired and you're just like doing whatever. No, I, everything is super intentional. Oh, so, okay. and like, um, so I listen to podcasts a lot and oh, audiobooks. And sure. so I will like while I'm listening to things, like I'll write down ideas or like somebody in a podcast mm. will say something that's really fascinating to me. Yeah. And I'll scribble down all these things and I'll create lists of like paintings that I want to make. Like I want to mm. make a painting that's about this. I want to make a painting that's about that. Like I want to make a self-portrait. Like all of these things. And so when it's time for me to paint something, um, like I'll look at my list and like I'll see like what like what do I really want to work on right now? Mm-hmm. Um, and I always do sketches before I do actual like canvas painting. Okay. So um, they do look. They do look like they don't look like you just decided to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It yeah. Does, it looks very intentional. Yeah. And because s- it, I feel like it has to be. Yeah. Well, yeah. With, like, and like that's and stuff like that. Right. And that's I think that's like I don't know from at least for me like what I like about like certain abstract work is when I can see like the intentionality of it, mm-hmm. even though it could be like splashes of color or yeah. something like that you can like see that there's like actual intentional thought behind mm-hmm. like what the artist was doing and thinking yeah, yeah. um and so so i'll do a lot of sketches beforehand and then sometimes i'll even like do the sketch digitally like in procreate mm. yeah, um yeah. and then sometimes i just take like a light gray color and just start like you know t- i just look at my paper sketch and like just kind of start painting mm. on the canvas yeah um and then um yeah, and then I've kind of just uh, built up like a good. I kind of know the color palettes that I like now, mm-hmm. um, and so that's it's gotten easier. I feel like choosing color is always actually really hard for me. Oh yeah, um, and I've changed my mind a lot. Like I've painted something and been like, "That blue is like not working," and so like change repaint it. it. Oh. Yeah, I know it's like kind of brutal. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, damn it, yeah. um, it's like just a little off for some reason, you know. And then, but you keep repainting it. What is that that's off though? Is my question. Like, what do you think in your mind? You're like, that blue is too dark or something. Yeah, like that. something. What it's about like, it? There is. It's like something is not working. Like mm. it's not cohesive, right? It's not like playing well with the other colors. Like it's like maybe maybe it is too dark or like or maybe it just shouldn't even be a blue at all. You know. Mm. Um, then you're just in a whole another minefield. Of oh like, my gosh! Could you have be any no color. idea. It could be you have no idea. I'll yeah. just start mixing colors, and I'm like, what about this? And I'm like. No, that's not it. That's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> the thing about the thing that's interesting though to me about that is like you could show that probably before you change it to like other people and they'd be like, that's I love that. You know? Probably. Like, so you Some people eyes, have like loved my like love stuff, and I'm just like, I was okay. I was gonna repaint that, but okay. So people like, yeah. I'll take it, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I'm like But is it hard for you to give something to someone? Like let, let's say you do a painting. And something's off about it, but you're just like, eh, I'll just give it anyways because they want it like that. Yeah. Is it hard for you to like think about that in someone's house? Yes. Even though it's off I don't, to you? Yes. Yeah. Um, And that doesn't like, 
And that that doesn't really happen. I no. like no. Like people will be like, "Oh, I like that." But I'll just say it's like it's not for sale. Like I've painted and repainted so many things, yeah. and I feel like it's like not like I'm not um I want to become more prolific in like how many paintings like I create a year, but like right now it's like I don't know what the number is, but I, I know it could be more. And mm. I guess now that I'm not doing like any other like freelance work and stuff yeah. like that, it will be. But um, it's because like I want to be really happy with everything that leaves because yeah. there's a good chance that like that will end up in someone's home and like, yeah. and I want to feel really proud of it, you mm. know? Um, there is always like stuff that you make, like stuff that I made like four years ago, you know? Like, I, of course, I'm going to feel, yeah. I might feel different about it or I might be like, because well, oh, you like, develop as a person. Exactly. So you're like, artist, oh, it's like you... so interesting that like I did that, you know? Yeah, or yeah. like that that's where. Like those, like there's colors, like I used to use a lot of reds and stuff and mm. I don't really use, eh, I use like terracotta, but like, um, but I don't use bright red anymore. Okay. Um, That's from early Liz, you know, yeah. you, artists have dates, you know, like yeah. an early, my this early person, yeah, my early, early days. years, yeah. uh, my early years. Yeah. And I just find it fascinating to see like how um, I've progressed and like what in the colors that I like, mm. you know, versus like now where it's like very earthy tones and things like that like that's yeah. what i'm interested in but i'm always like man i wonder if that's gonna like flip right if mm -hmm. one day i'm gonna be like you know what i really want to do like bright blues you know like yeah electric colors neons yeah, yeah. like i don't know so um yeah but no i usually yeah when things like leave my studio space i always tell people if like they come see my studio or something and like there's paintings that i'm like want to repaint that and mm -hmm. i hope that they don't want like want it yeah i will like be like oh this one's like i'll just say it's like work in progress started on fire in the corner <laughs> can't have it you can't have it <laughs> it's no uh, one yeah this one's like work in progress um, it's interesting though with that because so i work in video and like a lot of my early videos are not cataloged anywhere no one has them i can only see them yeah and look back and be like wow that's really terrible i'm glad no one sees that <laughs> right. you know what i mean yeah. like and and so i can see my own progression and be like wow this is how i this is where i started and this is where i am now and wow is it like way better but if you like give your art oh like to people right you have no control over they that anymore it. they have it now they have and it. so that's like a very interesting thing because yeah. To me, I wouldn't want people to see that stuff. Yeah. You know? Well, and I think that maybe that's like the benefit of like art school or something like that where you're you can get like. get all that out of the way. Where beforehand. you're like, yeah, like you're honing all of those kinds right, of right. like you're tinkering around and you're like figuring out like maybe mm -hmm. what you want to do and your style and stuff. And like, and yeah. And also like social media makes it so much easier to share your progress. Mm. But like sometimes not all the progress maybe should be shared because like yeah. there's some some things that I do that I'm like wow that's like not good like <laughs> I'm not going to share show that. that no yeah. um but and I think, uh, yeah yeah but I it's think that's like, my own ego though because it's like at the end of the day sharing that's like progress is like pr a pretty cool thing you know you yeah. can show people like hey everyone starts somewhere you know that's no true. one is freaking who's the best artist in the world right now i don't even know who it is. i don't even know the that's li that living one yeah whoever that is you know but and like the, the guy the guy who sold the banana at art oh god what is that you know like <laughs> know. come on um but uh that's that's just the whole thing you that, know that's yeah that's a whole other thing but um but yeah but you have to be careful about getting like any critiques mm -hmm. or things it with like those like works in progress right you know um, cause like sometimes, like sometimes it's good to not share your work in progress because you're like, this is not ready for a critique or like, uh, anybody to comment on it because I'm oh, sure, still working sure. through it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I just meant the things that you are done with, like yeah. from your, the start of your career until now. Oh, totally. Like you said, this is done. And I do like, I do like looking at like my, I'll like look at my Instagram and like scroll like way back. Mm. And I do like looking at like. God, like I was doing that. Now I'm doing this. Like I am way better now. I'm holy way crap. cooler. Yeah, like yeah. holy crap. That's what like, I always think about. I'm like, wow, I was such an idiot. Like I know. I'm just like, first of all, like why was I photographing that at night? Yeah. Like, come on. Um, but yeah. Yeah. That is that is interesting though. Yeah, I want the banana thing though. That's a whole thing. I don't, is that, that's not art. Who has enough money to just spend that much money on a real banana? I, then again, isn't it somebody ate the banana? Yeah, someone ate it. I know. Wow. Is he going to jail? That's like. I, I don't know. I actually want to follow up on that and be like, yeah. what happened to the guy that ate the banana? Yeah. 
That was I want to know who paid, for, like, what was it, uh, $120,000 for a banana duct tape to a wall? Yeah, I think so. God. That's a good question. Yeah. Who has enough money to pay for that? Well, also, who is the artist that did that, that put a banana um, with a duct tape on the wall? Uh, Are they famous? Yeah, so, yeah. He, he has, banana. like, he's an Italian painter, or not painter, but just, I don't know, he's a painter, Italian artist. I forgot his name. I did look it up, but I his name is escaping me. Um, but he is... Like when I read up about him, it said that he was kind of like a prankster kind of artist mm. and like he hadn't been <laughs> making a lot of money as a prankster. Yeah. yeah. And like this is like not like un like I guess not very uncommon for him. Like, I don't know. So I guess I think there was yeah. like some status kind of behind it. Right. It wasn't like I don't know if anyone could put a banana up and it would get that much. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I know. But it's also like it's probably one of those things of how uh the damn daniel kid actually worked for you remember that kid mm -mm. he was like he made this like there was this viral video of this kid with a backpack on and he was like uh, probably a high schooler and he like did this whole thing he was like damn daniel back again with the white vans you don't remember that no he did this whole bit and it had millions of views okay. right went viral he was on ellen like of, of course, course. Um, <laughs> of course, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, and then like a year or two after that whole like thing ended, Vans came out and was like, "Yeah, that was a campaign." Like he worked for Vans, and you all just got like essentially duped. You know, it was a Vans ad, yeah, and it just went viral. And that's of like course. what maybe it's like Del Monte. You know, right? maybe it's like I know we're just get, we're all getting duped right yeah, now and by the all banana, the big <laughs> banana companies. <laughs> <laughs> banana banana purchases have you know what i bet you if you looked at like stock for like i bet you they've gone up yes I bet more people are buying bananas i know more people are talking about them exactly some guy ate a six-figure <laughs> banana. banana you never know everyone run in the grocery stores it's yeah. a great marketing thing if you can think of it you know if yeah it, if it was sure. real but if, if it is if it happens like two, two or three years from now like a banana company comes out and says that i called it i just want to say that i and i will be like he called it. I called it. <laughs> I knew it. And we all got duped. <laughs> yeah, we all got duped again. Um, so uh, talking about your art and stuff, your style is very specific. And before I forget about this, um, you got to design like a guitar. Yeah. For the Chicago Fire. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Um, it was for the like man of the match and it was like with Heineken. Um, yeah. And that's a cool guitar, though. Uh, yeah. Did you get to keep one too? Or no, did we have to, yeah, I know. But it was like, I mean, I've never like handled a guitar or yeah. like painted on a guitar. So like that was pretty, that was pretty cool. Um, but they, uh, they had like a bunch of, I don't know how many artists in total, but, um, there were different artists for like each man of the match that mm. they were choosing for like the games and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. so, um, yeah, so I was one of the artists. Um, but that was pretty interesting. Like, yeah, when you're like painting painting on like different surfaces, like I don't know, it's just like a fun yeah. challenge. All and your guitar's gotta be tough to paint on though. Yes. Did you use specific paint for it? Um, so like we just used regular like like house paint on yeah. it. But it's like like if you were gonna like, oh, I want a guitar and it's like a guitar that I'm gonna play, yeah. like that's different and you you'd need to like probably like sand that thing down or something like yeah, that. Sure. Or use just different, yeah. Um, but since these were just kind of for display, mm. you know, you can kind of use just regular paint. That's a cool thing to get, though. If you're a soccer player, you just get yeah. a guitar. Yeah, the game. it was cool. really cool. They were like, all right, stand here, stand here. You know, and I was like, who is the guy that you got to meet? Oh, uh, some Chicago Fire player. Yes, I, I, only, I yeah, I'd have to like look. I, I, I only will, knew like, the German one that was here for a while. And then, yeah. Um, and I. I think I've gone to like one Chicago Fire game a long time ago and like we got to go to the game and like we got really cool seats and stuff. Yeah. And so it was awesome. It was yeah. so much fun. Yeah. But I want, so your specific style, like how did that come about? Did you always paint like that? No. Even, no? No. Um, when I was a kid, because I've always been like painting and drawing stuff, but when I was a kid, I was really into superheroes and like comic books. Mm -hmm. And so I did like those kinds of characters okay um and for like when when i was a kid i was like i'm gonna work for disney and i'm gonna like draw it's cool characters yeah um and yeah and i think like they got so i don't know i'm like old-fashioned i just want to like paint like paper and pencil <laughs> you just want paper and pencil that's and it. like and yeah and then you know the like disney animators like there's all this technology and stuff oh, no, and when yeah. i realized that when i was a kid i think it like 
Even then there was technology? I, I think all that was coming out. Like okay. they weren't the like hand drawing all the cartoons yeah. anymore. Like sure, they sure, used sure. to, you know? I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, but I was like, I don't know, as a kid, I was like so disappointed. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, that kind of like fell off. Um, but yeah, I, so cartoons and like, I don't know, I was like really nerdy kid. Uh, I draw like Pokemon and like who didn't, uh, who didn't draw yeah. Pokemon. Um, I still and, have all my cards. Right. Know, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. But. Oh, I think my mom sold my cards. I had so many. I, have, um, yeah. I had like all the holographics too. Those are the best ones. Um, so yeah, so I was all into that. And then, but when I, um, when I started to get back into art after like graduating and everything, um, that was when Instagram like was popular and mm-hmm. stuff. And so I got on Instagram and like, I don't know. It was like, okay, what do I want to draw? Like, what am I going to do? Um, and I kind of was like, well, let me go back to like what I used to do, right? Mm-hmm. Like I used to do like really – like I would do realistic like portraits and stuff like that in, yeah, in yeah. high school. Um, and so I was like, let me give that a shot. And like I would – I did a, I did that and I was like, I don't like this anymore. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, it's like you're like, oh, I used to like this type of food, so let me go back and try it again, and then you don't like it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's so weird. Um, And then with, like, Instagram and stuff, like, all of the art that I was really attracted to was, like, really abstract art. Mm. And that was weird, too, because I did not, like. I hated on abstract art as a kid. Same. I thought it was, like, ridiculous. Same. I was like, this is so dumb. We'd go to the art museums. Yeah. like. I'm like, I don't, Four colors on a paper? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't get it. Like, unless it's obvious, I don't get it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I was like, okay, like, I'm drawn to this. Yeah. So let's just start playing around with abstract art. Like, what does that look like? What yeah. What do I like? What don't I like? Like, why do I like it? Like, mm-hmm. it's kind of like just taking notes on yourself yeah. for, like, years, you know? Yeah. Um, and playing around with stuff. And so in the beginning, I did a lot of like black and white, uh, like line work, um, a lot of like, kind of like tribal patterned work Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, I, I still drew like, like the people that are kind of like, that kind of have that, like the geometric kind of patterns Mm -hmm. and stuff, like still had that, but then I had a lot of pattern work mixed in there. Yeah. And eventually I kind of just got tired of the pattern work and I was like, okay, what if I like still did like these kind of abstract people, but I took the pattern work out. So it was like simple. Yeah. Which was that 100 day project. And then, um, and build like, and then just basically build my like, uh, art practice on that. Yeah. Um, and so it was like just kind of constant, like iteration sure. of like moving it, f- like keep pushing the, the artwork forward, Yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I, I don't know for like a while I was like, I made an art piece and I was like, I like it. I was like, but it's still not like there, you know, yeah, yeah. but it kind of felt like this is, this is where I'm at right now in my, yeah. in what I can do. Yeah. Um, and so, and like, uh, Ira Glass has like a good like video where he talks about taste and talent. And Who like, it is? Uh, Ira Glass. Who's that? Um, uh, he's like NPR, like okay. a radio guy, uh, storyteller. And so, he talks about bridging like your taste and your talent mm. and like how you can have really good taste, but when you first start out or you're doing stuff, your talent might not match it. Mm. And so that's why when you like make something, you might be like, this is complete crap, it, yeah. you know? Mm. And so, yeah. So I, I kind of felt like it's just been like slowly progressing yeah. to like getting to the painting that I'm like, yes, you know? Yeah. Do you think it'll change at all or not? You can't do that now because like everyone no. knows your style. I mean, yeah, people like know my style, but I'm totally open to changing. Like, I don't think I'll stick to, I think I'm going to stick to this color palette for a while, but I don't know if I'll, like, I can't say like 50 years from now, that's what I'm going to be doing, you know, right. like that yeah. color palette, this, whatever. So yeah, I don't like to like, I don't know. You want to box yourself in, you know? No, like that's not fun either. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, we I feel like we become artists to like not live in boxes. Yeah. And then we put ourselves in boxes. So. And then you do that forever. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. Yeah. When you brought up Pokemon, um, it reminded me of something that in I think it was elementary school, I had this really good like Charizard holographic card. Yeah. 
and this other girl, I won't name her because I have to bleep her out of this podcast. Um, she's like, oh, I have this really good. It was like one of the most, it, it was like the Mew holographic, which is like one of the most rare ones. Yes. She's like, yeah, I have it. Uh, I'll just mail it to you, whatever. And I'm going to get out of elementary school. So I'm like, okay, cool. So oh I gave her my, my, my Charizard holographic. She mails me, write a card. Yeah. And in it is like when you get from a cereal box. And get she out. never gave me back the other one. I think we need to name her. I could still, I can probably her. find her on Facebook. <laughs> right? And be like, <laughs> do you remember so when you re- conned me <laughs> in elementary school? Where is my Charizard? How dare you? Right. Yeah. It was crazy. <laughs> I remember getting the envelope and I was like really excited and I opened it. And you're it like, and this like, is crap. What a <laughs> terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> Who does this to somebody? Yeah, it was terrible. That's funny. I still remember to this day. I I know. I can see it's still affecting you. We we had it banned in our school. Like we weren't allowed to trade cards. People really? were doing it like under the desk. <gasps> yeah, it was like a bad addiction. It was, <laughs> it was not good. Yeah. Oh, that's but funny. Anyways, um, so yeah, as far as like your your new stuff and what's going on with you right now, where can people find all the info? Like about what you're, you're um, up to. yeah. So uh, my website lizfloresart.com, and mm-hmm. then I post like all in progress stuff and um, like everything that I'm working on too on Instagram, sure. um, which is uh, lizito l i z i t t o. Nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. Go check out the website. Um, you got a new mural you're working on now. It's not gonna be open to the public, obviously. Probably, no. Right. Yeah. Um, is there any public ones that are coming or that you know of? Um, I feel like winter's a bad time probably for outdoor Yeah, art. no, winter's like all corporate, like indoor kind yeah. of stuff. So I have, um, hopefully I'll have, I'm trying, I'm like negotiating slash securing things right now, but mm-hmm. um, hopefully uh, for like early to like mid 2020, I'll have um, my largest mural like I've ever worked on. Wow, um, that's when this will be coming out, so. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So, well, hopefully then, you know, it's it's starting. If not- if not, Go. never mind. Yeah. Uh, I'll be working on a different project. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm like working on that, pro- like securing that project right now, um, which is really exciting and also very daunting. Because that's is that outdoors or indoors? And that's gonna be indoors. Okay, I was gonna um, say. Yeah, that's gonna be a corporate project. Bigger than the mall one. Two and a half times bigger than that. Wow, that was huge. that was a massive wall. Yeah. yeah, and so yeah, this one's yeah. Wait, I'm trying to like just get myself ready to see the wall, yeah, so that I don't get so, like psyched yeah. out. I know it's so um, big though; it's crazy. Yeah, and, and this is this is gonna look like nothing compared to that. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, I was talking to we were talking about this before. Big Shot Robot, uh, who is an artist in Milwaukee, and he did a massive one on a building that we sat in front of for the podcast. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome! And it was it's on a massive apartment complex all the way up, and I'm like. When you come up to this, like, where do you even start? Right. You know, it's so big. Like, uh, I'd just be like, okay, I'm leaving. No, I, okay, so that's how I feel with, like, murals that are, like, half of, like, a building or a whole building. Yeah. I feel like that, too. Like, I want to get to that point, but I, I'm the same way. Like, I'm, I'm, that's, I'm not sure even, like, how would I start that? Like, you really have to, like, have a game plan going into that. Oh, yeah. Um. So, yeah, the one that like I'm hoping like comes through is, is just going to be insanely long. Yeah. Um, so yes, but that'll be, that'll be a pretty cool project. Um, and yeah, just, I mean, I have more kind of mural projects in the works and then you also um, have art that you sell as well. Yes. Paintings. Um, you do commissions, I'm sure. Right. I do do commissions. Um, and then I do like, you know, just different group shows and stuff around Chicago. So I'm doing one, um, beginning of January. Um, is that just like at a gallery? Yeah. Okay. Um, in Pilsen. I believe it's in Pilsen. Um, and then with some other uh, female Chicago artists too. Oh, cool. So. Is that all on your website though? Do you have like events and stuff um, on there? I will put events on my website. I Good don't plan, do right? that. Yeah. Um, I just put stuff on Instagram, but like that, you know, how yeah. can we find that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been posting about that for a, like a while, but yeah. So that'll be... No, oh God, I'm so Dates. bad with like remembering like these details. But yeah, yeah. yeah that's early January. Okay. Yeah. Just and follow on social media and, and yes. go to the website. Oh uh, yes, go something to the website. Something will be there. You will find it. <laughs> something, I will continuously will be, be posting about about that show. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you. Cool.